Let's talk about personality in illness and health. Or that's the topic, personality and behaviour in illness and health. So, personality and behaviour. So when you get this question, you have to be aware of the distinction between personality and behaviour. Personality is C-O-C-C-D. So it's a combination of characteristics which form these combination of characteristics come together to form our distinctive character. And then personality traits and qualities are a little bit different. So you have to be aware of personality traits and personality qualities. Personality traits are stable qualities within a person. And stable means something that's consistent. And qualities are a series of common qualities. Personality qualities. Is it personality qualities or personality type? Okay, that's personality type. So think both of these are PT. You have to be aware of the difference between personality trait and personality type. So two T's, right? Two T's. So personality trait are stable qualities with a person. Personality type a series of common qualities or common traits that people people have in in common. Now, moving on from that, we have to be aware of what behaviour is. So a quick way to differentiate personality from behaviour. Personality is what we are and behaviour is what we do. Um, simply speaking, behaviour are a series of actions and reactions we have or we execute, especially towards others. And these are based on our tabs, thoughts, att attributes, and beliefs. And by the way, behavior can be conscious, unconscious, voluntary, or involuntary. Okay, um, let's also talk about the types of models we have and um, different things. So by the way, if we just go back to personality for a bit because we want to finish it off. Personalities, um, there's a number of different characteristics we need to know. PICM. So when you have the characteristics of a person, it paints a picture of them, doesn't it? So yeah, he's friendly, he's jolly, he's a happy-go-lucky guy. That paints a picture of them. So for P, so we've got another mnemonic. For P, I, C, M. For P, you have to say that characteristics or personality or components of personality can be psychological as well as physiological. Psychological as well as physiological. And personality impacts our behaviour and health. So it impacts not only behaviour, but behaviour and health. Personality can be consistent, or its consistency is a part of personality. Um, just to elaborate on all of these in a bit. And then M, by the way, is for multiple expressions. Personality can be expressed multiply. Just think of this guy smiling one day, being sad the other, being shocked the other day. Multiple expressions. Just to go into a bit, a bit more detail, psychological and physiological. Um, personality was thought to be quite psychological for a while, but personality is also find, being found out to have more and more biological impact on it, okay? In terms of how what personality can do, it can impact our behavior and our health, because personality um, gives gives um, some sort of direction to our daily attributes and how we conduct our behavior on a daily basis, which therefore in, influences our health. Consistency are um, kind of regular regular actions we take and regular beliefs that we have, a recognizable order and regularity to behaviors. There you go. Roar, roar, recognizable order and regularity to be of us, roar be. Okay, 
Next, um, multiple expressions. Multiple expressions, personality can be expressed in multiple different ways. Now, um, okay, now we've got a different number of different models we can talk about. We can talk about what behavior is. Um, by the way, behavior is um, what is the link? So we talked about what behavior and personality are. What about the link? What's the link between behavior and personality? So behavior is personality expressed through lens of emotional state. Personality expressed through lens of emotional state. Okay? Yeah. Now, then let's also talk about the different models we have. We have a health behavior model. We have a health behavior model. Then we have an illness behavior model. We also have an illness belief that we can drive, draw, derive off that illness belief. Then we also have an associative association model. These are the three models we need to know for number, I think it's number seven. Okay. And so the health belief model are behaviors that have implications health behavior model sorry behaviors that have implications for our health and the entire basis of that is the basis of this is personality affects health indirectly and there was a research conducted on this and this research was quite primitive in the sense that it um, assessed or assigned two types of personalities, type A, type B. Type A was the achievement-oriented, um, sort of stronger personality, overwhelmed, kind of achievement-oriented and impatient. And type B was laid back, kind of more patient personality type. And uh, this research actually showed that type A was more likely to have coronary heart disease. Now, the findings of this research were um, disputed because the research was not able being able to replicate well and results were not shown in the same way you know that um essence of uh testability reproducibility now um type a were also more likely to have personality disorders and type b were likely to become alcoholics that's just extra information now illness behavior model are our reactions or behaviors that are as a result of our illnesses. So illness behavior model is behavior generated as a result of someone's perception of illness, okay? An association model, um, associations may exist between personality and illness due to the third variable. So association model is saying that there's personality and there's illness, and these two are connected by a third variable, and associations are, are existing between personality and illness due to the third variable, which may actually be causing both. And you also need to know a little bit about illness, um, the evolution of an illness. So, for example, if somebody's hand gets a rash, first you have to identify what it is. Then you have to find out why it's there, what's the cause of it. Then you have to work out what the consequence of it is and how you can control it. And you have to have coherence of illness.